tonight. Join us on Facebook where we'll be filling our popcorn loop pool with popcorn. And I, yes I, will jump in to win someone $1,000. Wish me luck, I think I'm gonna need it. It's the Monday Night Show with Adam Freeman. Tonight, Andrew Lessman is back for two hours of super supplements. Then stay tuned for a special third hour with a death-defyingly fun finale. And now, the man who can't call out sick because his ProCap vitamins keep him too healthy, Adam Freeman. Well, we are thrilled to welcome everybody into another Monday Night Show. Great to see you there. Uh, and also thrilled for this, what's going to be a huge four-hour show. Yes, jumping into a pool of popcorn. But how could we start such a monumentous show? Well, with an amazing gentleman. Mr. Andrew Lesman returns. Andrew, sir, as always, a pleasure to see you. Thanks, Adam. Great to Andrew, be here. Andrew, you are the vitamin guy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the vitamin <laughs> guy, but I make vitamins. But you are the true success story when it comes to well, really changing the world of home shopping. Well, I think in terms of home shopping, uh, and we started a number of years ago on home shopping, I think almost 26 years ago now. So it's been 26 years we've been on television, and we've been focused on really evolving l vitamins in, in line with the science. I mean, if you've been following my products for 26 years, you've really seen the evolution of them. We did yesterday, today's special on Essential One. That product's been around for 38 years, wow. and, and probably probably has gone through no less than 25 uh, significant changes. And each time we make a change, we don't just make one change. This last time, we changed the B12, the folic acid, the vitamin D. So this is a passion. This is what, I guess, maybe I am the vitamin guy because that's what I do but almost 24-7. How did it begin? I mean, how did you set forward on this journey? Where did the love of vitamins come from? Well, I I've always had a love uh, of biochemistry, physiology, how the body works. Mm. I had intended to become a doctor. Um, I quickly realized on that path, as I was going through that educational process, that it wasn't what I really wanted to be doing because I wanted to focus on, that's like actually what I said to the dean in school, I said when, when medicine focuses on wellness instead of illness, that's when I want to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately it hasn't changed, it's only gotten worse. Where we tend to focus more on illness, we do fewer things in terms of prevention. And certainly vitamins aren't the only things we could do in terms of prevention, it's really an awareness of what we put in our body overall. Vitamins just being one small part of that. Well, we are excited about tonight to have Andrew here for this takeover. It's going to be an open well, and honest and conversation. And what we're going to do is we'll have graphics up throughout the show of different products, all of them at extra special mm. pricing for the visit. We might not end up talking about that specific mm. product, but I tried to put products up for which there were recent questions. Um, the first one we put up here, I put up the Valerian. Basically, because one of, I'm always getting questions for certain health issues. Yes. And of course, vitamins are not to cure, treat, prevent any disease or anything like that. But to the extent they could support us in the face of these challenges, then vitamins offer us an opportunity. And, and valerian is something that we have made for quite some time, a specific standardization. And, and we do it for purposes of supporting us in the face of the, the tension, the stress, the burdens that we all feel on a day daily basis. We all do. It's just a question of how we deal with them. I mean, that might seem crazy, but every day, I, I meditate every day. Right. And, if, and if I didn't meditate every day and exercise every day, I would be certifiably <laughs> out of my mind. <laughs> that, that I'm, we're all busy, life is challenging and stressful, so it's up to us whether or not we embrace um, habits that kind of become behaviors, and it's amazing. Things that are difficult, once they become a habit, they become pretty easy. Right. And you actually miss those good things once you make them habits, so. So for those of us who are looking to combat stress, and maybe it's with work or uh, home life, or maybe it's kids, or just everything's getting on top of you, if you're looking to help combat that stress, this product, Andrew, you have developed for that. It's a way to help. It's, it's a natural botanical, and it's again, it's one of those botanicals that has a fascinating history that goes back hundreds, actually goes back more than a thousand years, um, valerian root, valerian root extract. So it's an ingredient that has that traditional history that as we see 
with so many things, it then gets validated by modern science. Mm. And, and it's an ingredient that we, we don't speak about often on air. I was going to start the show with our nighttime product because mm. we didn't talk about that at all. Right. But a lot of nighttime helps us relax and get to sleep. It helps us reclaim our natural sleep process. But valerian is something for during the day okay. that allows us, that assists us in trying to find a more peaceful place. And again, the best way to find a peaceful place is through the behaviors we embrace. There are things we do that will cause stress. And one of the most stressful things, I talked about that before, and it's been validated by psychologists and psychiatrists recently, the news cycle, mm. the way we receive our news Every now, day. not just even the nature of the news, but the way we receive it, it is so stressful. It's the, the last thing I do at night, will, I do not want to watch the news on television. And I won't watch the news on, uh, on a, on a device. I won't look at the news on a device. In fact, at night, if I read, and I always read just before I go to sleep, I like to read fiction before I go to sleep. If I read, I won't read on an electronic device for, for specific reasons. I will read from a book. And uh, again, because of the nature of an electronic device and the effect it has on our eyes, the effect it has on our brain, I'd rather just read from Is a book. Is it still stimulating if you're looking at an electronic it, device? Yes, and, and it has the, there is radiation emitted by those devices, so I try to limit my exposure to them, and if reading a book means I read a real book, then that's a good thing. I'd love to get into that as well as we get through this, uh, this takeover show to talk about modern life and some of the challenges that we really, really are up against, our gadgets and gizmos and being so connected. It it feels like, and maybe that's why so many folks love the nighttime product that Andrew creates, because a lot of us find it hard to switch off. That's, and, and falling asleep, it's something actually, it's something we observe with infants, with little children, that they actually sort of have to learn to put themselves to sleep, some infants more easily mm. than others. As adults, we often have so much going on in our life. We, we might have caffeine, we might eat late in the day, we might work late in the day, we might work a graveyard shift. There are so many things that challenge us and make it difficult. And then as we get older, plain and simply, everything being equal, as we get older, the hormonal changes that go on in our body, that changes our ability and capacity to sleep as deeply and as long and to go to sleep as readily. And then there's things that we might have hormonal changes both in men and women. Right. We might have things going on with men in terms of our prostate. Mm. So we might otherwise have felt fallen asleep, but we might wake up because of our prostate and then we can't fall back asleep. So nighttime is designed to be a simple, natural tool that supports our natural sleep process, not a drug or medicine that's going to knock you out. Is it addictive? It's not addictive. It's, it's something that if you like it and it works, it's a good habit, okay. but it's not chemically addictive. Those other sleeping pills, in fact, many people use benzodiazepines, which mm. are a class of medications of which Xanax and Valium are a class of those meds. Mm. We tend to use them for anxiety or stress or things like that. Many people use them for sleep. Unfortunately, their biochemical, I said I like biochemistry, yeah. the way they chemically affect our body is to actually interfere with and undermine the sleep process. So yes, when you take them, they assist you in going to sleep, but when you use them consistently, they undermine your ability to go to sleep. Wow. So they might be relaxing, so it might help you deal with the anxiety, the stress, the active mind, but then one of the best things we could learn to do, learn from our Eastern neighbors and just meditate. Meditate is just like quiet prayer. Right. You're not praying for anything, but it's just getting quiet and being with yourself. And, and that physiologically has been shown to exert all sorts of wonderful changes on our body, on our immune system, and it allows us to move through our days much, in a much more relaxed and happy fashion. So how long do you meditate for? I try to do a minimum of 15 minutes twice a day, but my real goal is 30 minutes twice a day. Okay. And do you have anything playing in the background? Is there any sounds or any noise or any music? Just quiet. I just do it. Lincoln, Lincoln is always sitting right next to me, which, you know, if we have a pet, they tend to be incredibly soothing. So for me, my, my days are, are crazy and busy. So that's Lincoln. Look. So Lincoln with his little monkey. Oh my gosh. And uh, the other day a friend was over at the house and I told Link to go get his monkey. And I was, there was another toy right by him and he ignores the toy by him and he goes to get his monkey. And she's like, he really knows the names of his toys. Oh and my God, is that his favorite? Does. Yes, he loves his monkey, yes. Oh my God, okay, yes. they're telling me. <laughs> should we, we need go, to run along. Should we go for a walk over there? We should, let's Good. do it. I really think the next time we do one of these shows as well, Andrew, we should almost make it like an evening with or a conversation with, because I enjoy talking to you about so many of the topics well, that are so linked to everything you do. And most, uh, most of what I have to offer, I think, 
more than my supplements. Uh, I've spent my entire lifetime focused on wellness, focused on health. Every week I, I just go through dozens and dozens of research papers and clinical studies. So th the thing I have to offer is information that allows us to help make better decisions. And that's what I've always said. And it's been validated by, by studies that those of us who become more informed about our health, we become healthier. Mm. That when it comes to our health, ignorance is not bliss. When it comes to our health, the more we know, the better we can partner with our doctor, the better decisions we tend to make, the better decisions we make in terms of diet and lifestyle. So let's get into circulation and vein support because this is one of those products and I was looking at some of the reviews earlier. I was refreshing my memory it's, on some of them. It's 80%, Andrew. I'd say if, if you looked at the reviews and there's... Uh, 1,900 five-star reviews, probably all told, there's only, uh, there's barely a little over 2,000 reviews. So most reviews, 80 plus percent are five-star reviews. But I, I'm gonna do this in my office. We're gonna do a word search. And I guarantee if you did a word search, you'd probably see the word miracle at least 100 times. <laughs> Probably see the word godsend 50 or 100 times. That, that it, it's truly made life changing, you'd probably see 50 or 100 times. That, that it's one of those products, and I, I said this yesterday when we we're talking about how unanimously positive the reviews were for Essential One. I think one of the things we have working in our favor is most people have been so disappointed by products that don't work. Mm that when you make a product that does, it kind of gives us an unusual advantage. It's true. It's sort of, we're being like, we're, we're, it's like having a sibling that's really badly behaved. <laughs> By comparison, you look like a saint, even if right. you aren't. Not that that's how I was with my sister, <laughs> but uh, hopefully she's not watching. Do you have but just one sister? I just have one sister, yes. Does Gail. she live near she lives, to you? She lives in Connecticut, so she's on the opposite side of the, of the country from us. So, but, uh, but I see her often, and I might be in New York visiting, so I'll get to see her hopefully in the next couple of weeks, which will I be great. I love this. You see, we're getting to know more and more about Mr. Andrew Lesman and himself. I've, and I've, I often speak about my godchildren. I have two nieces as well. You're very so, close, I know. Yes, yep. So, yeah. It's wonderful, though, because I think a lot of us, we watch Andrew for so many years, and it's nice to see maybe just more of him and understand who this man is and what makes him I tick. Will. I'm not sure if everyone really cares about the minutiae oh, they of, do, of my life, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad to share. It's, it's no, no, great, I, no big secrets. But we trust you so much in terms yeah. of these are important products that we oh. are consuming, we're putting in I, our bodies. No, and I, I take, as you asked me a question about the plastic in our bottles, mm. I I am probably guilty of sweating the details. I don't tend to obsess over things in my life. I tend to obsess over my products. Yes. As you saw yesterday with Essential One, that we, and I, it, it's, it's so normal and natural for me, I didn't even emphasize them, the changes in B12 or folic acid or all the things we're doing in terms of vitamin D, that even with our plastic, we forced the vitamin bottle industry to move to recycled resin. The only way you get vitamin bottles in the past was virgin resin, as they called it, where it had to be made from fresh petroleum. Environmentally, that's not good. You'd, there's so much recycled plastic available, why not make them from recycled plastic? We forced that to happen probably about 15 years ago. It's why if you look at our bottles, they're not super, super white because they're not bleached out virgin resin. So they're white, of course, but the labels are actually a little bit whiter. So it's, it's, true. it's just something that everything we do, um, we use HDPE, uh, we switched to that a while ago because it's the most inert plastic you could use for a vitamin bottle. It's lighter than glass because glass breaks, glass is also heavy, has a much bigger carbon footprint in that respect. So it's a very careful decision we made uh, because HDPE is such a stable resin, I'm not aware of it off-gassing at all, so you don't have to worry about that. So these are things that I, I spent too much time thinking about, obviously, but... Uh, it's comforting to me, though. I mean, it's like every element, every aspect. It's the pursuit of perfection in everything Andrew does. And what makes me laugh is that you talk about these reviews, like 2,000 reviews, like that's normal. Andrew, you realize most products have 10 reviews. Oh, no, I, I, I realize if, if Muriel and I are thinking of going to see a movie or going to a restaurant, we're happy if there's two dozen reviews. So, so when we think we've got two, and we have products, like this product has 2,000 reviews and, and is consistently referred to. And I should say a little about what it simply does. Mm. Uh, it's the, the circulation of feet, ankles, and calves, probably the most overlooked, neglected, but probably the most problematic. Uh, it interferes with the quality of our life, the comfort of the way we live, and the appearance is also unpleasant as we get older or depending on the challenges, if we're overweight, if we stand too much, sit too much. This is a product 
the, the key ingredient, and we've extended, extended it so far beyond what they originally did in Europe, all the clinical medical studies in Europe over the last 50 or 60 years, we've made it even better and broader by expanding the ingredients in it, increasing the potency, but it's a product that can profoundly change how you feel at the end of the day in terms of the circulation in your feet, ankles, and calves. I encourage you, better than I could ever speak about this product, read the reviews. Yeah. And the, this is another product where positive reviews are about 97 to 98%. Mm. Just as you look there, it's over 2,100 of 2,300 plus reviews are four and five stars. Um, just as we look at it right there, about 85 or 86% sure. are five star reviews. And I think a lot of us do struggle with that. And if you do read the reviews, you'll see that if you have issues with your legs, if you have issues with at nighttime, it being very restless, this is something you have to try. Andrew, let's take a walk over this way. And, and just uh, finishing one more second mm. on the circulation vein support, yeah. it's just really important to understand. It's, this is something that affects all of us. Even if we have the healthiest circulation in the world, as we age, it changes because mm. of gravity, because of the nature of the aging process. So this is a product, even if you're like me and you think you have, you have the healthiest circulation imaginable. Where I noticed it is I'm active. I'm as active as I was 30 plus years ago. So it's something that I felt a profound difference in the way I recovered from my training. Most of us will just feel a difference in how we move through the day. One of the things that um, I've always wondered with, you know, the various vitamins and supplements, is it ever too late? I mean, as we go on to our next one with glucosamine and everything, um, is it too late to ever start, Andrew? Can you still make a difference? Actually, what I've always said, it, it's not something that ensured, encourage people to neglect themselves till they're older, but almost the more you've neglected yourself, the more the products I make, it, it's sort of, we've had them referred to as like the, 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 old, the TV shows where you'd see someone would go up on stage and they'd be touched and healed. Yes. So not that this is a healing, but it's almost more remarkable the more you've neglected yourself. And not certainly a reason to do that, but it, it really gives the product an opportunity to have a, a greater platform to work from initially. There's going to be, as I said before, a greater difference. But in, in fact, no matter how old you are, uh, whether you're, as we heard yesterday, I read a review from someone who gave our essential one to their 90-year-old mother. Wow. And the product was the first product they were able to swallow and enjoy the benefits and feel better taking. So it's never too late to start. Certainly the more things you do to support the product, the better the results will be. But as I was saying before, the more things we do that are incorrect in our life, it's almost like the greater margin that this product has to deliver benefits to us. So. I hope, and what I've found, is that the more you tend to focus on products or ingredients like this, the more you tend to call upon yourself and make decisions that are positive in the same regard. In terms of our joints, uh, being active is the most important thing we could do for healthy joints. Of course, follow the instructions of your doctor. And for our joints as well, being at our ideal weight over the course of our lifetime, it's never too late to make changes in that regard. It's structurally better for our joints, obviously better for blood sugar control, mm. obviously better for blood pressure control. So these are things uh, from which we, we derive great benefits. And, and I keep trying to figure out some way to help us make eating a more conscious process because I think the problem with eating is it becomes just such an automatic process that we really don't think about it in terms of how it consciously defines who we are and who we're going to be. Does eating and what you eat affect every part of your body? Well, it's what we eat and that's very funny. If, if we were to look at something I've eaten over the, the last several years, mm. and, and if we wanted to look at something that wasn't me, you couldn't, I would disappear that unless you're an infant and then your body is determined by what your mother ate, mm. everything you've eaten over a period of time before is who you are. The only molecules and atoms we have to create ourselves is from something we've eaten. That's the literal definition of we are what we eat. So if we think of that, some of the bad processed chemicalized foods we eat, right. that's what we're giving our body to create us. That is who we are. We're not some static thing that uses these things and gets rid of them. We use them to make us, that's who we are. But then in a more figurative sense, in a less literal sense, 
When we eat healthy, we are healthy. When we eat better, we function better. We're more energetic, we have a more positive outlook, we move through the world in a better fashion. So yes, we are what we eat, and, and when it comes to something like glucosamine and chondroitin, these are just ingredients that aren't readily available in our diet unless you're eating gristle or things. The, as my, my grandmother got me doing when I was a little kid, I, I used to eat, I still do, when I have chicken, I'll eat the ends off the bones, the cartilage off the bones. Really? The I really? For some reason, I love that chewy little thing, everybody. <laughs> so again, this is probably what they say, TMI, too much information. Yeah, I love it. So, but glucosamine and chondroitin, happen to be highly concentrated in those tissues. Glucosamine and chondroitin are the elastic tissues uh, in, in humans, in animals. They're the tissues. In fact, back in the day in 1979, we actually got our glucosamine and chondroitin from bovine cartilage at the time. Hmm. We no longer need to do that. But so it's interesting, it's long been recognized that those are the ideal sources for these molecules that make up these critical elastic tissues in our body. And not just our joints, but also the elasticity of our arteries, the elasticity of our veins, the elastic elasticity of our skin. And, and as this little chart here shows, it, it's something that it's been well established, well accepted, and well explored. Wow. So literally tens of thousands of research studies and clinical studies on these materials. The big issue with glucosamine is, is really whether it's made properly. And in our, in terms of our product, made properly because it's in an easy to swallow capsule that won't upset your stomach. But most glucosamine is glucosamine hydrochloride. Not active, not beneficial. Ours is glucosamine sulfate. So you want glucosamine sulfate. Glucosamine sulfate and glucosamine hydrochloride are two different materials, two different molecules. They share a common part of the molecule, but ultimately the difference in the sulfate group or the hydrochloride group, the HCL group, that determines the efficacy of the product as well. So you need glucosamine sulfate. So for those of us who suffer from aches, pains, we have issues, let's say, in our knees. Well, this is something you can take and, that can help. And that's a good question, because you reminded me back to what you were saying before uh, about if we've done nothing our whole life and neglected ourselves, right. is it too late to right. bother taking a vitamin? That whatever state our joints have, are in, if we ignored them for 80 years, yeah. if they have all sorts of problems and issues, fundamentally, they still share the same structure. They still possess the same structure. Glucosamine and chondroitin still play the same role in a healthy joint versus a diseased joint. Hmm. So they are not working on those joints as a drug or medicine. What they are doing is they are working on those joints as a structural molecule that determines and affects function. Hmm. So the answer is, is yes, no matter what stat we're at. And I, I've been taking glucosamine and chondroitin since probably about 1977. So I've been taking it for wow. a very long time. It was one of our first products when I started my company back in 1979, which is now obviously 38 years ago, Amazing. which is way too long. <laughs> so, so and, and I attribute, despite all of the maybe the mistakes I made in terms of all the sports I did in my youth, and my parents always warned me right. that all these high-impact sports I was engaged in were going to take a toll. I'm still able to run and bike and do all the things I, I did when I was young. I'm still able to do it now. So do so. you play tennis, golf now? Any, what I, kind of sports? I tend to not play tennis or golf. What I tend to do is I like... <laughs> I like running uphill. I like running. You like a challenge. I like running up steep mountain trails. I like mountain biking up steep mountain trails. So that's the crazy stuff I do. I was going to wear a, a GoPro camera while I did some of my mountain biking, and I, I decided that everyone would be too scared if I did that. So <laughs> I, it probably wouldn't be a good idea because it's steep mountain trails. That's what I love to do. And you do that all across the country, don't you? Yep. Wherever I am, that's what I do. I find a mountain. Let's go, go, let's go over this way and talk about our next item. And folks, one of the things that we don't really do in these takeover shows is talk about pricing. One thing I want you to know with every item that we are showcasing, there are special prices and special pricing on all of them. So you can buy with confidence that you're getting the great savings that have been available over the weekend. Which so, is good, because we want the best deal. Yeah, everything we're talking about is on extra special pricing for, for till the, I guess, till tomorrow, probably. Yes, till the end yes, of the day tomorrow, correct. we're doing that. So we just thought, and because all too often during the weekend, we're focused on our today special. Yes. Because I'm only here literally six hours. That's right. it. So we don't get a chance to talk about as, as diverse an array, as, as broad a range of products. And, and a lot of the 
other f fun questions you ask me that... I've got many more, Andrew. No, that's still good, because I, I think it's, as I said before, health and wellness requires that we know what to do. Mm. And certainly there's lots of books and magazines and things we can look at. Mm. There really isn't a lot of magic. Everybody likes to, quote, sell you their magic sure. path. It's really pretty common sense. I tend to not espouse any particular religion of health and fitness. It really is about staying active, being moderate, eating intelligently, really staying away from processed food, really staying away from sources of sugar, concentrated sources of sugar and things like that. It's, we all pretty much know when we're doing the right thing, when we're doing the wrong thing, I think it just serves, uh, serves us to have a good reminder every once in a while. Well, yesterday, Andrew was um, comparing and talking about with his Essential One, different vitamins, we were comparing them with Centrum and One A Day and other brands, and we were talking about colors of vitamins. <laughs> and Andrew was commenting that his vitamins are typically a form of beige color, not the most exciting. Right. But these, Andrew, the turmeric is beautiful. But that's very funny you should talk about this in terms of the turmeric because the turmeric is something that this is, and back if you go back thousands of years, turmeric was used to color clothing and different things mm. back, in, back in Asia. So turmeric has wonderful coloring properties. We can see it here, I'll, I'll open the capsule. It's a bright, bright yellow, almost Fabulous. so vivid, oh, wow. it's, it's orange as you can see there. And our turmeric, you can see it's almost, you can, on my, if you're here, it's almost a little gummy. The reason why our turmeric is gummy is because we actually combine it with lipid. Turmeric on its own, even the, the best standardized extract of turmeric on its own, is inherently poorly absorbed and, and rapidly excreted from the body. In order to get the benefits of turmeric, you need to sort of go back historically. Turmeric has always been combined in foods, cooked into stews, complexed with fats. So not surprisingly, when you complex turmeric, as we have it here, with a fat like phosphatidylcholine, mm. which is the principal phospholipid in our liver and in our brain, you miraculously, really not miraculously, you scientifically make curcumin dozens of times, you make turmeric and the curcuminoids in it dozens of times more absorbable. So getting the benefits of turmeric is not simply, you can even see my fingers are now, my hands are, are orange, but uh, as you can see from that. but. The, what's, what's interesting, it's not as simple as just putting even the best standardized extract into a capsule or a mm -hmm. tablet. You really need to go one step further and emulate what has always been delivering the traditional benefits, which is to complex it with fat, kind of like it was complexed with fat in a stew or something like that. Andrew, one of the things, um, we talk about food, I'm interested just to kind of dig a little deeper here. If you imagine that we're all on a blank canvas many thousands of years ago, how do we get to the stage where the East and the West is so dramatically different in terms of what we prefer to eat? Oh, well, you know, traditional diet has evolved over centuries. Traditional diet evolved over the locations where people lived, mm. what was readily available. Um, if you go back a, a few thousand years, basically, um, traditional diets start disappearing and all they ate was what was available in nature because we were not uh, we were not having animals that we were growing to eat. Um, we were not growing plants. We were not harvesting food. We were basically at the mercy of Mother Nature. Um, as, as I've said, if I were going to be the healthiest version of myself, which I'm getting closer and closer to that. I was a vegan back in my 20s, um, and, and I'm not a vegan now, but I'm now someone who I'll eat fish, chicken, turkey, but basically don't eat dairy products anymore. I look at dairy products, and I hate to say it, I look at eggs. Um, eggs have such high levels of cholesterol because an egg is responsible for growing a baby chicken, and it has to it has neurological development, all of that, and that's those uh, cholesterol is required for all that neurological development, the development of the fetus. Uh, milk is something that's designed to probably take a, a calf from probably a few dozen pounds to several hundred pounds in a matter of months. So milk is something that's also, and it's full of all sorts of hormones and things like that. We talk about hormones that might be off gas from plastic. Think about the, the active compounds that are in something like milk. So these are foods that, for me, I recognize that, especially as I'm getting older, mm. that I, I want to give fewer provocative foods to my body, fewer foods that might have served a purpose for growing some infant mm. um, chicken or infant um, calf, 
and, and foods that are healthier for the planet, healthier for the environment. So these are changes I've made. And it's, a lot of people make diet about sort of religion. And for me, it's not. It's just simply a, a pursuit that's based upon the best science. And for me right now, that means I, I get good protein sources from chicken, from fish, and, and occasionally from turkey, but no more red meat. I just have crossed that off the list. At all. Yeah, it it's, tends to be higher in saturated fat. It tends to be also higher in cholesterol. cholesterol. Uh, it, also, for me, it's a little bit more difficult I, to digest, and right. I know I'm not unique in that regard. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just something that's a lot more challenging for the planet. If you look at a food that we eat as a factory, a chicken is a factory making the food that we're going to eat. So is a fish, or so is a cow. Right. The cow is a very inefficient factory. The, the, the amount of waste product created by that cow. So, and again, everyone can make their own decisions. So from an environmental standpoint, I mean, we are outnumbered by animals and as much of the world advances sort of economically, they eat more and more animals and we're literally as a planet going to be overrun by the animals we eat. It's, I find it interesting because I, it kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning, Andrew, um, with regards to people seeing you and watching you for so many years talk about so many important issues. I think the you're a person and a personality where we certainly have a lot of respect for your opinion, which is why I'm intrigued to ask you these questions. In many respects, and, a role model. And for me, a lot of people will become vegan or vegetarian because of their love and respect for animals and they don't want to do harm and I truly admire that. And certainly no one loves their their pet better than I love my <laughs> dog Lincoln or I'm right up there with you. Um, so that's not the basis. I said it's not like a religious philosophy that has me kind of doing what I might do in terms of diet. It's mm. really an adherence to science and, and the dietary changes I made in, in just 30 days from December to January, which will stay with me for the rest of my life, literally changed my lipid values by 40%. So diet is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool. The drug companies don't want us to know that. I, it's funny, about 15 years ago, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal, mm. and it was talking about the rediscovery of diet as the most important tool in healthcare. And, and I think it might, be, I think it might be Socrates who said it, or Aristotle, I know it was one of the ancient <laughs> scholars, that said, let food be thy medicine. And, uh, and so I look at food as being something that's supposed to be beneficial and palliative and nurturing for my body and not something that I'm supposed to feel guilty about having eaten or feel badly about having eaten. Well, I think for a lot of us, we are, you know, we, we, we keep with our traditions. We are in so many habit forming ways, what we eat, uh, what we choose when we go to a restaurant, what's on the menu. And I think it's intriguing to see maybe the small steps that we can make, maybe to go a little bit healthy or make some other choices and decisions. Um, we're going to talk about this next item, which is a really an appropriate one right now. And Andrew, just to quote what somebody put on a, a very recent review, they talk about the marine collagen as a new you in a bottle. Well, marine collagen, and it's very funny, um, many people love this product because of its benefits for the skin. Mm. And the original research in Japan, and that's where we get our marine collagen peptides from, they are the experts. They know, they'll, they'll forget more today about marine collagen peptides than I will ever know. They've been doing this for decades, so, and we go to the principal source with the greatest research in terms of marine collagen peptides out of Japan. So it's an ingredient that originally, there's, uh, there's incredible studies on the skin, on the fine lines and wrinkles around the eyes. But then there's also a great body of research, which I love, that talks about its benefits for the joints. So especially when we talk about something like glucosamine and chondroitin a while ago, which glucosamine and chondroitin are those molecules that are necessary and responsible for these elastic tissues in our body. The integrating protein that glucosamine and chondroitin require the integrating po protein that our bones require, because our bones also must have some degree of resilience, it's collagen protein. So collagen protein is the predominant protein in our body. And collagen protein, many people have looked at this product and said, well, collagen is a resistant protein. It can't be absorbed. This can't be beneficial. It's useless. Or they'll say, you deliver collagen protein, if it's going to be absorbed, if it's going to be digested, it's going to be broken into its constituent amino acids, and it's just gonna be amino acids. It can't be beneficial, it's not collagen protein. The way this material works, and that's the wonder of the research supporting it, is that it's absorbed as peptides. So absorbed as small components of protein, not single amino acids, but dipeptides, tripeptides, oligopeptides. And those peptides, 
act as a signaling protein for collagen because those, those peptides have an identity that associates them with collagen protein, collagen peptides. And it acts as a signaling protein in terms of the synthesis of your own collagen, which as we get older, we are not as good at synthesizing and manufacturing the collagen protein that we need. Also, of course, those collagen peptides also can act as structural components. So it serves a dual role, both signaling and stimulating the production of collagen protein and also acting in a structural role in making up that collagen protein. If you'd like to order yours, they are um, obviously all on special, which is important to know. This is one of those where we'd love for you to sample it. I know that Andrew is um, not alone when he talks about the amazing benefits of this. The 500 plus five star reviews are through the roof already. Oh, what I should mention too, while I remember, because there are a lot of questions I should speak to. And one question that I'm often asked, and especially with something like this, right. is there an ideal time of day to take your vitamins? Is there a specific time of day that I should take a specific vitamin? The answer is, if, if it's not specifically clear to you, then you could take it any time of day. And what I mean by that, nighttime. You take that before you go to sleep. Uh, if you're looking at something like Cholesticare, Cholesticare blocks the, we'll talk about that in a moment perhaps, mm. blocks the absorption of cholesterol, the reabsorption of bile salts. So obviously you take that whenever you eat. You could take a capsule of Cholesticare. Or Choco Nuvo, you take your Choco Nuvo with a meal. It's delicious, you can take it any time, but when you take it with a meal, Choco Nuvo actually will block the absorption of cholesterol and the reabsorption of bile salts. CoQ10, you could take that with a meal, it's better absorbed when you take it with food, or you could simply take it with a capsule of omega-3, so that delivers the fats that help it be absorbed. But my capsules are so small, soluble, easy to digest, you don't have to take them with food for purposes of avoiding a stomach upset. The reason why you'll take them with food is because nutrients are best absorbed in the presence of food. Think about how nutrients arrive normally. They arrive with food. So that stimulates your body to go through the normal physiologic process of digestion and nutrient absorption. So that's the best time to deliver them. Something like marine collagen peptides, my whey protein, my secure meal replacement, you could take those anytime. You, don't, you can take them around a meal, but you could take them anytime. So in terms of our B-complex, we have found that our B-complex, some people would say B-complex can be neurostimulatory, so you shouldn't take it at night. Hasn't been the case with my product. So you could take them throughout the day. I tend to take my supplements in the morning and afternoon. Okay. I tend to get them out of the way earlier in the day. That's sort of my nature, so I don't forget. I take them with meals, I take them with breakfast. And my everyday breakfast, usually, if it's not a smoothie, and even if it's a smoothie, I put oat bran in it and I put flaxseed in it. Mm -hmm. But I typically make my oat bran, I put my flaxseed in it, I might put some berries in it. So that's, that's my, and I put some cinnamon capsules in as well. And we're gonna have some of the oatmeal and oat bran later on in the show, maybe for your new breakfast solution. Let's go this way. Uh, uh, Andrew, no surprise that one of your most popular products uh, is to do with beautiful hair, gorgeous skin, and amazingly strong nails, uh, aptly known as the Healthy Hair, Skin, and Nails supplement. The number of people that swear by this is, is astonishing. Constantly a hot favorite. It, and, it, and it's sort of, again, if I, if I ever want to think that <laughs> my, my own wisdom or ability to predict what goes on in my industry, I, someone suggested I'd make this product 25 years ago. Uh, maybe it's not that I pr couldn't predict how well the product would do or how popular it would become, but I, I guess I took myself too seriously. I was saying, we make, we make things like glucosamine and chondroitin for your joint health. We make omega-3s for heart and brain health. We make our ultimate eye. We make all of these products, circulation and vein support, that, that have scientific clinical support. We don't make a, a vanity product. Right. And... Um, but what I suddenly realized when I finally, after being asked over and over to make this product, I finally decided to make it. What I finally realized, that there's no product that people, makes them feel better about themselves mm. than this product. So it was a product that I could have made probably five, six, seven years earlier. We've, it's been around for now about 20 years. And, and I think just in the last several years, we have, I'm not sure, some, someone in the neighborhood of four or five thousand reviews it's it's an absolutely incredible though it's yeah it's over five thousand one hundred and forty four reviews so about eighty percent of those reviews are yeah. five-star reviews between 
four and five star reviews were, were somewhere around 90%. It, it works. If there was an Andrew Lessman Hall of Fame, this would be in the Hall of Fame of products. There's no doubt about it. And maybe tonight as perhaps you discover Andrew for the very first time, maybe you are just channel surfing on this Monday evening and you've never even heard of the Andrew Lessman product line. This would be a wonderful way for you to start. If you're looking to encourage healthier hair, better skin, better nails, this is a product that you will see a noticeable difference. As it says right there, in less than 30 days. They're pretty much immediate results, Andrew. Well, it's, it's a product that, because our, those tissues are growing all the time, it provides an opportunity to see a rapid difference because they're, they're such rapid differentiating tissues. That's right. why certain medications have such an adverse effect on our hair, skin, and nails because our hair, skin, and nails are immediately influenced by what's going on in our body. And again, that's one of the most common reviews you read are things that we're doing, whether it's health, health challenges we might have or medications we might take, that it challenges our hair, skin, and nails. And again, this is not a drug, this is not a medicine, but the reviews of this product are astonishing. And what I really want to underscore, and I think people forget about this as well, if you really want to have radiant, healthy skin, yes. beyond this product, healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, we all, we all it's, it's funny, we think that there's got to be shortcuts, but there's no greater benefit. I'm, I'm, as they say, I'm no spring chicken. And the, I think the reason why that I hopefully don't look quite as old as I am, and I'm happy to, <laughs> as long as I'm healthy, I'm happy to look as old as I, I might look. But I think the benefits that are derived from a healthy diet, the benefits that are derived from a healthy lifestyle, and of course, coupled with healthy nutrition, that's, that's the kind of things we do to have great skin, great hair, great nails, to do the very best we can. We have, whatever our genetic, genetics are, that's what our parents gave us. We could always blame them, and of course we do. But um, but ultimately, uh, those genetics will only be as good as the tools we provide, and that's determined by diet. Why are we programmed to always be tempted by or like what's worst for us? Why is that? Why do we like candy more than we like broccoli? Why? Well, I think it's it's a little bit of human nature, but it's also a little bit of sort of not the best economic influences around us. Why do we like candy? Um, candy is sweet. What does sweet mean? Sugar. Mm. What does sugar mean? Energy. Mm. So our genetic blueprint allows us to identify when we were not as intelligent as we are today, when we're just running around in loincloths, <laughs> our, we were able, we could taste something and know if it was a great source of energy. Why? Because we love the taste of fat. We love the taste of sugar. That's why cheesecake is like a religious experience sometimes, but, uh, which, <laughs> which I did have some wonderful cheesecake on my birthday. <laughs> but um, so it, it all makes sense. So that's why, so we're not being bad. In a world of scarcity, which is the world we came from mm. generations ago, in a world of scarcity, the ability to find sweets and find fats in nature, because those give us, gave us the energy we needed to survive, that was a powerful, powerful tool that enabled us to survive. However, in a world of abundance where sweets and fats are everywhere, mm. and the people who make foods and make those foods available to us drown us in those fats and sugars and even salt, right. because again, we're programmed to, to love the taste of salt because salt is an absolutely essential component, mm. but we're drowning in that as well. So again, it's just that our society and economic influences in our society take advantage of that genetic blueprint. I want to uh, transition, if we may, for just a moment to, uh, is it phytoceramides? Phytoceramides, yes. I've got to get all these pronunciations correct. I'm learning as I go well, along. Well, ceramides, uh, ceramides, it's, it's a molecule. Phyto just means plant-derived. Okay, and this so, is a new one for you, isn't this, it? This is a product we introduced about a year ago. Um, it's a product, it's an ingredient where the, the research on this, in terms of um, keeping your skin moist, if we didn't have, and oddly enough, one of the principal molecules in our body involved in keeping our skin moist and retaining moisture in our cells is cholesterol. Huh. So because cholesterol is this waxy, fatty substance, so cholesterol, phytoceramides, fatty acids, these are the fats that enable our cells, which our cells 
The inside of our cells, all our cells, are, is an aqueous environment, a water-based environment. How do we keep the water in those environments? Basically, it's like a wrapped in a bag. That cell membrane, that bag, is a, a lipid bilayer. It's made of fats. And phytoceramides are a critical part of the moisturizing capacity of our skin. The, the phytoceramides, the, the cholesterol that our skin secretes are what keeps our skin moist and, and that's something that the radiance of our skin, mm -hmm. the capacity of our skin to avoid wrinkling, mm -hmm. that moisture, mm -hmm. that comes from within. And the phytoceramides that are orally deliverable uh, are orally, are then deliverable to our skin. If you'd like to order this, it's a wonderful partner piece, obviously, as we mentioned, to healthy hair, skin, and nails. Uh, special pricing. And can I just confirm from our wonderful Andrew Lessman team, is the pricing ending tonight or tomorrow? I think it's Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Okay, yes. so you have right now yeah. and, of course, through to tomorrow at midnight to take advantage of all these special, special offers. Let's head over this way. And another big topic, and, Andrew, we've mentioned it a little bit with eggs, and we're talking about diet. Cholesterol and levels of cholesterol and how it affects our lives. How big a problem is this? And principally, um, with, within a relatively broad range, cholesterol is not a problem. Cholesterol is, is meaningless. So as long as they are total cholesterol and in considering our LDL and HDL cholesterol, as long as they're within a, a certain range, not problematic. Okay. I'm not someone who tends to obsess over cholesterol level such that you take drugs or medicines. And of course, the first line of defense with, with cholesterol would be a product like this because it's natural. It's approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to lower total and LDL cholesterol, also to, re to, reduce, our risk of heart, to reduce our risk of heart disease, our ultimate oat brand, ultimate oatmeal, eating things like edamame soybeans, eating things like lentils and peas and things rich in fiber, all will contribute to lower cholesterol levels. The cholesterol only becomes a problem as those numbers go up, and I'll talk about in what fashion. And there's all sorts of great things we could look at. We could start looking at particle size when we go to our doctor, so there's greater analytics that they could apply to our blood test. We could also look at uh, indices, indexes of inflammation that gives us more insight into what's going on in our body. But in terms of cholesterol, if we have no other risk factors, if we're at our ideal weight, if we're active, if we're doing everything correct, we don't have high blood pressure, we don't have type 2 diabetes, if everything is in line, then before cholesterol really becomes a problem, our LDL cholesterol level has to get up pretty significantly. It has to get up over 120 to start really becoming a significant concern. Um, unless, of course, our HDL is unusually low mm. or our total is unusually high. But if our total gets high, usually the LDL goes up with it. And, and the only way that I've been able to raise HDL cholesterol in my case is, is through exercise. And it requires significant exercise to make a significant difference. It requires moderate to intense exercise and at least for two to three hours a week is my reading of the clinical studies. So HDL elevation in terms of cholesterol, certainly any exercise is beneficial to our fitness. But in terms of elevating HDL, it really requires significant exercise for a significant period of time throughout the week. But what happens with cholesterol? As we are a society now where 75% of us are overweight, 40% of us are obese, that breathes more life into the negative impact of cholesterol. Mm. As we suffer from hypertension, type 2 diabetes, as there are other things in play, cholesterol becomes more problematic. Mm. So if everything's great, then cholesterol is less of a problem unless it starts moving toward an extreme. It doesn't become really predictive of heart disease without anything else going on unless it's moving more toward an extreme. And, and as I've always said, the power of diet is, is unquestioning, unquestioned when it comes to lowering your total in LDL cholesterol. The changes I made, uh, just eliminating, as I said, eliminating egg yolks, which for most people are the single largest source of cholesterol. I eliminated, also eliminated red meat, also eliminated dairy products and things like that. As, uh, as a young kid who was playing sports like football and always wanting to gain weight, I probably drank two gallons of milk every day as a child. <laughs> I figure I've eaten enough, I've, I drank enough milk by the time I was 30 to last, last a lifetime. So, but ultimately, 
um, I just eat foods that are consistent with my good health. And, and my numbers literally had out of nowhere, I went from perfect numbers in terms of lipids to very imperfect numbers. So I became my, my own best customer for oat bran. Um, I make sure also that throughout the day I eat things like edamame. Muriel just sautés some, some edamame. They're like green beans. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Soybeans, sautés them up with say some extra virgin olive oil with some herbs and spices, mm. maybe a tiny bit of low sodium um, soy sauce because we also tend to watch our, our sodium. My blood pressure is low and I like to keep it there. So cholesterol is something that to the extent you could keep it low and keep it healthy by not using drugs, that's a wonderful thing. And uh, unfortunately, the drugs are essential for many of us but again, if you change your diet, it's amazing the, the influence it could have on your cholesterol levels. Maybe not as much as mine, where it went down almost 40%, but it's still, you'll expect with a change in diet, we're using something like this, a minimum of 10 to 20%, a bare minimum of 10 to 20%. Also, one other thing I mentioned the other day, yeah. encourage you to talk to your doctor about this if you're taking cholesterol-lowering medications. There's some good clinical science out there. If whatever you're taking, say you're taking something like Lipitor and you're taking 20 milligrams a day, there's some good clinical studies out there that says if you just switched to 20 milligrams every other day, because most of those drugs have long half-lives, they stay in your body for a while, your results will basically stay about the same. Wow. So you'll go to half the dose, you'll save half the money, you'll have probably uh, a fraction of the side effects when you have something, usually side effects go down significantly more, the risk of side effects. So, And then even something called Zetia, mm. another popular cholesterol-lowering drug that works in the metabolism of cholesterol in terms of the digestive system. But uh, Zetia, the typical dose is 10 milligrams. There's a wide body of clinical research that says if you take five milligrams instead of 10, same exact results. Right. So again, these are things, talk to your doctor about them, but my goal is just to help everybody be healthier. So when my friends ask me questions about statin drugs or Zeti or whatever it might be, I do the research so I could give them an intelligent answer. And, uh, and of course, you could do the research too and you could share your intelligent answers with your doctor. I'd love to ask our special producer, Mr. Steve, if after we've spoken about Fibromucil, is there any way, Steve, you could find the details for the incredible cookbook that Andrew and Muriel put together? It's on a weekend special of $7. We a should page. do the everyday eating and then we have the veggie cookbook and we have the soup cookbook. The soups are what I, I live on throughout the day. Mm. I mean, I just love her soups, her turkey chili her pea soup, her, her split pea soup, her sweet pea soup, they're all wonderful. And fiber, the more fiber we have, the more things move through us rapidly. Fiber works with cholestic care to lower your total in LDL cholesterol. And again, we're not talking about a single digit reduction, uh, which if it was 5%, that'd be fantastic. But we're talking about 10, 15, 20% or more. In my case, we're talking about 40% that my perfect numbers for all of my life pretty much until about the last five six seven years I wrote this in my blog post at wordsonwellness.com My cholesterol numbers just took on a life of their own for the last five six seven years Yes, it's, it's I guess it's not fun getting older But when I modified my diet the and my diet was what it always had been when I modified my diet the numbers responded beautifully So it's amazing what our body can do when we take good care of it, when we give it the tools. What is it? I heard this in Sunday school all the time. God helps those who help themselves. Yes. So whatever your belief yes. system might be, um, whether it's karma that <laughs> as ye sow, so shall ye reap, or what goes around comes around, there's no escaping the fact that if we do the right thing, we have a much higher likelihood <laughs> of good results. If we don't, we have a much higher likelihood of bad results. And you know, when we have some of the right tools to go along with that, it makes yeah. things a lot easier. Here's some of the details on the cookbooks, and I highly recommend if you've been engaged in anything that Andrew's been saying, this is gonna give you a jump start to make some really positive changes in your life. The first one I believe we're showing is $7.90. Some of yeah. your favorites, Andrew, and with 44 recipes. 44 recipes, every recipe comes with a full nutrition fact panel. Um, and these are the kinds of foods that I've been eating to to achieve the reductions I'm now experiencing. And, and I don't eat junk food. I mean, on my birthday, as I said, on my birthday, I didn't hesitate to have a piece of cheesecake, but I'm someone who overall realizes that, you know, I, the most precious gift I have is this life, and right. I don't take it for granted. So I understand that the most powerful decision I make every day in terms of my life, 
that decision is every time I put something in my body. It, it's, and, and I think we all must realize that. We, we overlook because it's such an ordinary process, gosh. We do it all the time throughout the day, every single day we right. eat. So it's very easily easy to have that become a mundane process without a lot of significance, but nothing defines our health nothing defines our future more than we put in our body today. Well, that's a perfect segue to our next item because if you're looking to maybe start the day in the best possible way, we have an incredible product that is beloved. Um, it is, of course, Andrew's Ultimate Oatmeal, an oat bran. That's good, I'm hungry. If you right now eat, oh, there you go, you see Andrew's I'm having hungry. breakfast for dinner. Um, if you have oatmeal or you eat oat bran right now, we're asking you to change to simply use this and eat this because, Andrew, you've done something that nobody else had done. You actually included plant sterols, which further enhance the cholesterol-lowering benefits. So we were just talking about cholesticare. Each serving of Ultimate Oat Bran or Ultimate Oat Meal, and I actually prefer the Oat Bran. Uh, I like the texture and taste better. Also, Oat Bran is higher in beta-glutene, um, beta-glucan. <laughs> beta it's also higher in fiber. It's also higher in protein. So uh, I like it because it's richer in all these things I'm seeking. A quarter cup of uh, Oat Bran or a quarter cup of oatmeal contains, or third, third of a cup of oatmeal, contains two capsules of cholesticare. If you do this every morning, every morning, I would expect that just doing this every morning, you're going to see a reduction of either side of 10%, your total in LDL cholesterol. And typical oatmeal and oat bran is great for your cholesterol level. It, we, it's well established that the Food and Drug Administration allows a claim for reduction of total and LDL cholesterol and, and help to reduce heart disease. But what we've done it just hasn't enhanced it a little. So if oatmeal or oat bran on its own could do two, three, four percent of cholesterol reduction, the way we do it here takes it up to 10, 15, 20 percent or more. And for me, I even make this a snack. And Muriel, we have a version here, a savory version, where she'll even make it with like mushrooms and things. Looks lovely. So it's, I mean, we, we just think traditionally to us, oats are just for breakfast. But now she'll use them, she'll use oats to make uh, coatings for chicken and things like that. So an, an oat bran and all sorts of things. So it's a, this is our month, along with Cholesticare, this is our monthly special for this month. So it's an opportunity for so many of us eat oats. And another thing that we do, and this, this delayed this product by almost a year, that I wouldn't do this unless we could do it not just organic, but gluten-free. Right. Um, I learned something that I didn't know. I always thought oats were gluten-free, which I'm right. Oats are gluten-free. <laughs> However, because our country is overrun with wheat, that unless you get specifically isolated and segregated oats, they're not gluten-free. Huh. So we literally had to wait for the creation of our organic gluten-free oatmeal. And what we really had to wait was for the organic gluten-free oat brand. It didn't even exist. So ours is organic, ours is gluten-free, and two capsules of Cholesticare in each small serving. And it tastes good. That's the number one question people wonder and ask as they see and listen to Andrew and understand the benefits and the health benefits that are there. <laughs> uh, did you just throw oatmeal on your shirt, Andrew? <laughs> no, I have some oatmeal. He couldn't eat it fast enough. I think it's on his leg. It's on my leg. <laughs> no, that's not oatmeal, that's oat bran. So, but, and I really do love the oat bran. I can tell. I mean, I like the oatmeal. But I, and it's funny because I've mostly been eating oat bran the last few months and now I, I got a chance to taste them side by side. <laughs> and, and I really, I prefer the oat bran and it's more powerful in terms of cholesterol lowering benefits um, and higher in protein, higher in fiber. So that's my preference. And it really does taste fantastic. I will tell you that the joy of this and I've started to eat the uh, oatmeal since I met Andrew about, uh, or started working with Andrew about seven or eight months ago. It tastes wonderful and I would encourage you if you're intrigued and you'd like to sample it, we'll send you one and if you don't love it please return it for a hundred percent refund of your purchase price if there's one thing that you will i really believe understand by the end of this monday night show takeover with andrew is that his true passion in life is to make sure that you the customer are 100% happy. It is the pursuit of perfection. I said yesterday, and I, 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 it came out maybe a little wrong, I said there's nothing about Andrew or the Andrew Lesman brand that is normal or ordinary because everything you do, Andrew, you go the extra mile. No, we, well, as I've often said, if we can't make a product 
unique and different and special, then I, I'll leave it to someone else to make that product. Right. So in the case of Oatmeal or Oat Bran, I had no real desire to make Oatmeal or Oat Bran until we played with this at home and we figured out that our oatmeal and our oat bran, because of the addition of Cholesticare, didn't just enhance the cholesterol-lowering properties, which of course it does, mm. but it actually made it creamier, made it taste better. And you read the reviews, the reviews are almost perfect reviews of both oatmeal and oat bran. I think they're 4.7 or, yeah. There or, we go, we can see it there, yeah. yeah 4.8 stars, so literally almost perfect reviews across the board. So oat bran or oatmeal, um, I believe we're gonna talk about one of Andrew and uh, Muriel's teas, and I'm excited to talk about this because I've heard Andrew talk about green tea, and a lot of folks you'll talk to will say green tea, green tea, but not everybody likes the flavor of green tea. Well, and it's been my, <laughs> one of my causes is to help uh, Americans embrace green tea. And, and, it, and it's something that should be uh, easy for me to do, because like you, if you're like me, I never liked the taste of green tea. Right. Typical Chinese or Japanese green tea, I never enjoyed the taste. So we were able to find the mildest, unfortunately the mildest green tea is also the most costly green tea. Of course it would but be. But we were, we were able to find the mildest sensual green